Hello everyone, this is attorney Grant A. Teppen. I am a probate and estate planning attorney based in Manteca, California with an office in Livermore, California. And today I am going to show you how I fill out Judicial Council Form GC-348 or Duties of Conservator. So before going any further, I should let you know that nothing in this video is to be construed as legal advice and nothing creates an attorney-client relationship between us. I'm just showing you how I fill out the form. So this form is incredibly easy to fill out, but there is a lot going on underneath. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to fill out the form today because the form has a lot of information for you to read. And by signing the form, you have stated to the court under penalty of perjury that you have read not only the form itself, but the conservator's handbook for the state of California, or that at least you've received the conservator's handbook, I should say. It's a pretty substantial book, but it's really important that you just Google conservator's handbook, get that PDF. Some counties make you pay an extra 20 bucks and get their copy of the conservator's handbook. It's the exact same as the one that's online. But that's basically what you're saying when you sign this form, that you've read the form, you've received the handbook, and what that's supposed to convey to the judge and the court is that you understand that you're undertaking a serious position by becoming a conservator and that you have reviewed the various responsibilities and techniques that you're going to have to abide by once you are a conservator. So let's jump in. So I'm pretending as usual that I'm not an attorney for how I fill out this form. So I'm not gonna include my bar number and I'm going to state that I am in pro per, which means self-represented. Um, you would not have an attorney here. If you did have an attorney, they'd be filling this out and their name would be here. So just put the best mailing address for you. I'm putting my office address. Best telephone number to reach you, a cell phone is fine. I'm putting my office number. You don't need to put the fax or email if you don't want to. It's optional. So then for the Superior Court, make sure you put in the correct county where you are applying for the conservatorship. This is 99% of the time the county where the limited conservatee or the proposed limited conservatee is domiciled. Street address of the court, make sure you put the address where the probate court for your county is. Check the court's website to make sure. Also check the court's website to make sure that you have the correct branch name. Here it would be the main courthouse. Now I'm showing you how to fill out a conservatorship form uh, for the person only. You would of course click a state if you are asking for estate powers. And the proposed limited conservatee, I'm just making up a name, John Smith, case number. I typically file this form at the same time as my petition, so the court will put a case number on here at the time of filing. If you are filing this and completing this after the petition has been filed, you will already have a case number, and you will put it here. Case numbers in San Joaquin or something like that. I'm just making one up. So here it shows you all the, the duties of conservator. I'm not going to belabor the point that you're taking a lot of responsibilities on. It's important that you review this on your own time regarding the conservatee's rights, that you should consult with an attorney. Um, if you have one, this talks about what a conservator of the person means, including deciding where they'll live, medical care, also working with whoever is managing the conservatee's property. If there's a conservatorship of the estate, it goes through prudent management of the estate. Um, when you need court approval, not to commingle funds, uh, making sure you have interest bearing accounts and how to treat investments um, and various other aspects that can pop up when you're dealing with a uh, limited conservatorship of the estate, okay? So if you have a limited conservatorship of the estate, it also reminds you you will need an inventory of the estate property. You need to keep meticulous records of all financial transactions and all other asset transactions. Um, you need to disclose 
to the court and changes in marital or domestic partnership status. Now this part, the limited conservatorship, this is rel uh, relevant for what I'm talking about in this series, setting up the limited conservatorship. This makes it clear that the letters of conservatorship provide the contours of your powers over the limited conservatee, how the public policy of a limited conservatee or limited conservatorship, I should say, is to help the limited conservatee develop self-reliance. And also it goes into a determination of the level of care for certain limited conservatees. Limit, uh, temporary conservator is basically if you're applying for an emergency scenario, um, a short term, um, less notice is required. You don't have to wait as long, usually two and a half months to get into court. You can get into court in a week or two for a temporary conservatorship. But I find that the public is a little too grabby with applying for these. They always think that their scenario is an emergency. And while I understand the sense of urgency that comes with protecting your loved one, um, unless you have a very exigent emergency that is going to cause irreparable harm to the limited conservatee's estate and or person, uh, you're not going to want to apply for the temporary conservatorship. Uh, this makes it clear that there are various judicial counsel forms that are identified by this form that um, you know are part of this whole proceeding. And then down here, all of the proposed conservators would date, print their name, sign. So let's see, today is 1-14-2020. I'm going to type my name here. I would sign in this field over here. You need to check the handbook for conservators, like I said, make sure that you Google that. It's free online, but some count counties make you pay the 20 bucks and they give you a printed out one. So once you've signed it, uh, make two copies of the form, bring it all to court, file it, boom, you're done. Easy as pie. This is probably the easiest form of the form set. But I want to double down on saying that you should check the handbook for conservators. Since I'm talking about limited conservatorships today, just check out the limited conservatorship section. It's not very long, and it has a lot of really good information. So please check that out. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.